this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. The extra time that I now have means I can get at things that have been a niggle for a while instead of just keep putting them off. And <laughs> this sea of green is three separate plants, all of which have come to the top of the list to have something done about them before they get any worse. Um, one that might not be possible. So this species Vanda is going to get dealt with. I'm doing that in this video. Yeah. The other two, I've got my Dendrobium Friedrichsianum. Checking that I got that right. Yeah. Oh, that's a good start. Getting the plant name right. Um, this has been a niggle for a while, and it's not really the plant that's the niggle. It's where it is, and um, and what's happening. The moss on this is quite old and um, it has one of those solid type dendrobium bases and um, what's going on in, in underneath there I don't know but what I do know is some root tips have gone missing for no apparent reason especially as some haven't so there's probably some munchers in there you know, several people have said well why don't you spray it with hydrogen peroxide well think about it what happens to hydrogen peroxide when it touches something it's an instant reaction and what's left over after that reaction which takes place fast and then stops all you're left with is water how much hydrogen peroxide would I need to put on there to guarantee I've got right to the back of the plant and into all these little nooks and crannies behind that plant that's a lot and it's not cheap stuff so the easiest way is to take it off the mount give it a good clean up and start again and then if any munchers are around, they will be dealt with. It's a process of elimination. If they are the problem, they are about to be dealt with. If they weren't the problem, I'll think again. But at the moment, that's the obvious answer. I've got a couple of those little flippant snails lurking in the back of there. And um, when they find a place where they're happy and they've got something to eat on a regular basis, that's where they stay. They only move on if things change and they don't like where they are. So that one's got to be dealt with. That's a strip off the mount. Good clean up, get all the old moss off and um, think about whether it goes back on the same mount. So that's that one. And this one has been looked at so much it's getting a flipping ego. It wants its own dressing room now. Damn cheek. Um, there's lots of things wrong with this, but the main thing that's wrong with this is it's really restricted root base and it's extra fast root growth. And as if adding insult, um, there's deficiencies simply because it can't get enough nutrients here for its rapid rate of growth. Um, but what I have noticed of recent times, because I've looked at it closer, is that the new growths on it are nowhere near as good as, its, as their predecessors. So the whole thing is just grinding to a halt. And you know what they say, if a plant's going downhill and you stand there and watch it, you'll lose it. And when something's not working, change it. Don't stand there and stare at it and scratch your head. Do something. And, you know, it might not be the right choice, but doing nothing is often not an option. Doing something is probably a better idea, and with a little bit of thought behind it, you can probably come up with what's needed. But, you know, this, this yeah, I can see several new growths that are not doing as well as they should be. This plant should be bursting with energy this time of year. So, I've got to put that one right, too. As I say, I'll do the... Um, Dendrobium and the Maxillaria as separate videos. So we can get back to the Vanda. You're not going to like this. And at this particular point in time, do you really think I'm that worried what you think? <laughs> I'm worried about this plant that, despite my efforts, has not stopped going downhill. I haven't arrested its downhill progress despite the things I've been trying to do to it. So, first job, as like I said, you're not going to like this. The spikes are coming off. 
I know it's a shame, but if I save the plant, I will get some more of these one day. If I don't, these will be the last ones we ever see. Make your choices. So that's the spikes off. Next thing is, is to find the lowest point I dare take that cane off, and it's going to be there. Okay, so that is a potential plant for the future. Maybe. I'll worry about the kiki in a minute. Oh, do you know, I, <laughs> I'm not a religious person, but there was a little um, mini prayer offered then. I knew that I was going to have to cut that rhizome. And if you remember, well, if you watched the other video, last time I cut it to get it in that little plastic basket, um, it did have some staining and what looked like a bit of rot at the base of that stem where I cut it, which worried me a lot. That stem is absolutely clean. So you have to ask yourself now, bearing in mind we had a little um, chat about transpiration and what function it performs within a plant, yeah? Takes all the stuff from the base of the plant where the roots are and gets it up to the top of the plant, yeah? And all, all our um, elements in our fertilizer get dropped off on the way. Yeah, we'll have a bit of that there, a bit of that there. And then now we know that if the plant actually thinks, actually I could do with a bit of some of that over here. In some cases it can move it around. And in other cases it's dropped off where it's needed. That's where it stays. And that's good to know. At the moment that makes no flipping difference to this plant whatsoever. What I think the problem with this plant was, and I've now got some backup, is simply that in the past something had gone wrong with the base of that stem. And apart from this one root, all the other roots were below that point. So how did that process of everything getting up to the top of the plant take place when it was all bunged up? And therein lies why the Fusarium wilt fungus is so devastating because it blocks those pathways and stops that process taking place. That's why it is so devastating to plants if left unchecked. I'm not going into all that. Okay, so um, that's that plant and um, it has one root, yeah, and it now has a clear pathway, yeah, once it gets some more roots. And now I'm going to play a little game that I don't profess to understand, I don't necessarily want to, but you know I drink coffee. Well, I don't think giving coffee that would, would do any good, but um, what do people drink if they don't drink coffee? That's why it's in the top of the cupboard, because I can't stand the stuff. If they don't drink coffee, they tend to drink some of that stuff. Now, I don't profess to understand how this works or why it works, but I know it does. And at this point in time, if I can stand that in something, and the solution of that in that water, I'm told pretty reliably that it will force this thing to grow some roots. And as it's already got the start points for those roots, they're already there, waiting to go. There's no rot at the base of this plant, nothing. It's a healthy stem with totally dehydrated and really pale leaves. Yeah, well, if it's not getting the hydration and the nutrients up the stem, then the hell is it going to work? <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to do. It's going to have a nice cup of tea. <laughs> so I'll come back when I've um, made up the brew. Okay, there we go then. That looks about the right colour. And how do I know it looks the right colour? Because I've just had a look at what spurred me on to do this sort of thing. And I've had a good look at what was done and thought, well, that's not too dark. But then it's not so pale and wishy-washy that you can't see the colour there. I've got no idea if that's the right strength. No idea at all, but I don't understand why this works. And at the moment, I don't 
even need to. I uh, just need to put a drop more water in, simply because the end of that root's not completely covered. That's about it. Now that's it. Now, at the moment, I'm not absolutely sure how long it's got to sit in there, but I do know it's a vander, and for the vander's sake, it is going to have to come out and dry off now and again. It can't sit in there forever. That, that's not how they work. But while it's sitting in there, that one root is obviously going to absorb that stuff into the base of the plant. Yeah? And that's where I want it. Because that's where the roots are going to grow from. Now, <laughs> in theory, the fact that the bottom of that stem is now actually exposed Providing the cut was sharp, it could potentially wick up some hydration through that stem now, even though it's not a root. You've still got a function that happens, whether you like it or not, um, capillary attraction, um, that sort of thing. And it means that liquid will rise up through a narrow gap. I mean, you guys with your lecker beads and your ceramics, you're using that principle all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's to do with surface, te surface tension and capillary attraction and, and, a, and a liquid will try and get into narrow little gaps. If the gap's too big it won't do it, but it tries to do that. You get a little tiny dropper, long thin dropper like that and stand it in some liquid and the level in the dropper will be higher than the level of the liquid even though you've done nothing and you know there's no air pressure involved, well there's a bit of air pressure involved, but it, it tries to climb up through narrow gaps, so it might even take some of that stuff in through the base of the stem. So that's it, that's what I'm doing with that one. Um, I don't know how long results are going to take, but if the video I've recently watched is anything to go by, it could happen a flipping sight quicker than anything that's happened so far, which is next to nothing. And something is better than nothing. So let's see if we can get something to happen. Clearing off all those dead woody sheaths has made way for things to grow out of that stem. So I've prepared the way. And um, now it's having a nice cup of tea. <laughs> let's see what happens. Updates will follow. <laughs> see you next time. I thought I'd better add... I thought I'd better add this onto the end of the video, or every, everybody's going to ask what happened to the kiki, so I just as well include it. Save a lot of uh, writing in the comments, won't it? Well, what I'm going to do with this is equally as drastic. Both of these roots are coming out from the same point, but bearing in mind the reason these were left on the whole plant was to try and hydrate the whole plant. Well, the whole plant's gone now. And so are they. Now you can see what I'm getting at. There is something wrong with the stem. And it's still wrong at that point, but it wasn't as wrong at that point. Let's see how far down I can go, starting at the top. That doesn't look bad. And that doesn't look bad. So basically, up to and including here on the stem has got that horrible staining in the centre. It's not round the edge, but it's still there. So I've got to ask myself, does that tiny little kiki still need that root? And will it do it any good at all being attached to a stem like that, bearing in mind what that root's trying to do? Yeah? Well, the idea is for the little plant, the little kiki, to grow its own root system. In the meantime, it can get some hydration from there. And the fact that that has no discoloration whatsoever. Nope, I'm going to take it off. Now that's better. At that point, the stem's clean. Yeah? So I'll leave that little bit on. But basically, what am I going to do with that then? Well, I can't give it coffee, but I can give it tea. So that's just going to go in with the other one, and we'll see what happens. Maybe that will trigger some root growth, and then I've got a new plant. Quite honestly, this little kiki is a much better colour than the other one. This spotting is scale. 
don't worry, worry yourselves not. They've been dealt with, they are X scale, but they were there. And because I was so worried about the top of the plant, I was taking no notice that a few had got in, you know, in there, where you can't even see the little blighters. <laughs> and once they take some bites out of your leaves, you get a pale patch, you know. So I'm, yeah, we'll see if we can recover that little one. <clears throat> Maybe. We'll wait and see. See you next time. Thanks for visiting my channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, there are some others you could watch below. You can just click on the thumbnails. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. You can use the link below. I post on most days. So hope to see you again soon. Thanks for stopping by.